we can start. <laughs> so um, here, this is the agenda for today. Um, we will have a short introduction just to put ourselves onto the same um, frame that we know what we are talking about. Then we have a, a poll with you through Mentimeter as we did in the previous webinars. And then we have three re uh, two really great presentations on AI and VR in public libraries. I will introduce our speakers later, but they are already here and we are really happy that they are there. So um, as I said, we want to discuss the role of public libraries in providing activities around, um, as usual, one thing I have just a problem with the display on my, um, uh, yeah, okay, now it's fine. Oh, it's not yet fine. I do it like this. Um, sorry, I just had a technical issue. So we talk about um, digital literacies targeting a young public, and we want to talk about new technologies. I will define this later. Um, and we are specifically referring to VR and AI and public libraries. Um, I thought that before we come really to to our detailed presentations, we look again at the Digicom framework for citizens that we introduced during our last webinar, because I thought when we talk about digital skills, we can really have a look again at the key um, areas of digital skills that are defined in this framework. And we can see that uh, communication, collaboration, digital content creation, problem solving, but also the others, they are all so relevant when we talk about new technologies. So I think we should um, keep this in mind for the, the rest of our, our reflections and presentations. Um, so what do we mean when we talk about new technologies? Well, we all use these terms all the time, but let's just take a second to put it again um, on the table. So we talk about relatively new and rapidly growing technologies, AI, Internet of Things, blockchain, big data, cybersecurity, robotics, VR, and um, AR. Um, what is important to, to mention is that um, they are growing and that we don't know yet how they will transform our society and economy. And that um, it is said that they will only reach um, the plateau of productivity within 10 years or 15 years or maybe later. So it's um, rapidly growing and changing. Audio settings, All right. So um, artificial intelligence. I found a first definition from 1955. Um, and there I thought it was interesting to have a look because it referred to um, the human intelligence. So it, it says artificial intelligence problem is taken to be that of making a machine behave in ways that would be called intelligent if a human were so behaving. I think it's quite interesting to, to see this. Um, but I think for our context, it makes more sense to look at the UNICEF definition of AI. So I let you have a look at it, read it. So we talk about... Um, machine-based systems that give a set of human-defined objectives, make predictions, recommendations, decisions that can influence real or virtual environments. They systems, they interact with us um, and our environment directly or indirectly, and um, they can learn about the context. Um, when we talk about VR and AR, because we, we will also have a look at it later in the presentations. Um, so there we mean a 3D environment um, in which a person can become immersed using a dedicated headset powered by a computer, game console, or smartphone. Um, and it can be enhanced through various other technologies. And augmented reality refers to a real world environment enhanced with computer generated information. So you have single elements, okay? So I found um, really interesting reading tips I wanted to share with you, but 
we don't have time to really talk about them. But if you are planning um, activities or if you want to think further, you can have a look at these two texts um, that are really great because they give us ethical reflections about the work um, with new tech, specifically targeting children or in the context of education. So I thought it was really interesting. Well, then um, we have now our moment of Mentimeter poll with you. So I will invite Gabriele, who is somewhere there, to share his screen with us because he will have our questions. Gabriele, are you there? Yes, I am. I'm Hi, Gabriele. Sure. You can turn your camera Hi. and say hello. Yes. Hello, and everyone. Hi. <laughs> All right, so um, this is our first question for you. Oh no, it's our second question. I think I, can oh, no. I have to present, I need to move. Okay, because first we would like to know where you are from and not only your country this time, but I would like to see your library because we thought it's really great for us to see from which library you are joining us. So. We asked for the library, the city, and the country. So it will come. And we can, you see the access code in the presentation. So maybe just a second, because like our groups here from Dublin, they are connecting to menti.com. Okay. So we will be joining you in menti. And I wanted to take this opportunity because Elisabetta just showed up to welcome the group in Dublin because I forgot it. We Maybe you can wave or you can make some sound because we have the last LTTA in Dublin this week. Elisabetta is there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know so, if you can show, you cannot show us the room or the group, can you? Can I turn the computer or would I? <laughs> Great. Thank you. So basically, um, yeah, from Dublin, uh, I, 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 you cannot see myself on on the, on the screen, but we are in Dublin at LGMA office, and together with me, uh, there are like many li librarians coming from our network, and today is our first day of training, and so okay. <laughs> thank you. That's so exciting, Elisabetta. It's great that you are there. Actually, you are the only partner who joined another LTTA. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you. I wish I could be there. And we can see all these libraries. Dublin. Dublin. But we have, as usual, we have many Irish libraries, but we also have Turku in Finland. You can see we have Italy, Bergen. Veria, great. Novi Sad, happy you are there. Excellent. So I think we can move on to the second question. Welcome everybody again. CPU, it's always so impressive. Okay, now we would like to ask you if you are already testing or experimenting with new tech in your library. Okay. We will get more specific in the next question, but this is already really useful to know. Interesting. I don't know how many participants. We have 61 participants plus the LTTA. So um, 80, around 80 people. That's great. Okay, so there is already a good part of you that that started to do things with new tech in the library. That's great to see. I think, Gabriele, we can move on to the next question, please. Okay, so this is more specifically asking if you are already offering activities for the users. 
or if you are working on it. Okay. We would like to know everything about it, of course. Okay. Maybe the ones who answered no will get some inspiration today. Okay, there are already plenty doing things. Of course, we know, but it's impressive to see. All right. I think, Gabriele, we can slowly move on to the next questions just to, to keep our time. So this is um, our last question, and this is more specifically asking if you are getting training as the library staff, if it's part of your CPD program, if you have. Okay. I mean, we have a couple of new tech case studies in the Adele case studies, so you will, you will see... Um, inspiring examples when we publish this one. Okay, that's great, interesting. I think this was our last question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Gabriele, for running. This I'm one done. is great. And if you can again share the, the slides with us, this would be great. Okay, so I can. Thank you. I will just um, share my screen for one second to introduce finally our first speaker. So this will be uh, Jeroen de Boer. You can share your screen with us, but I will just in introduce you. So Jeroen, he's working as an um, advisor for digital citizenship at the KB, the National Library of the Netherlands. And he's working there on a na nation nationwide digital citizenship program. The program is financing and supporting Dutch libraries and setting up digital citi citizenship programs. And they cover topics such as AI, disinformation, ethical dialogues, and citizen science but they also focus on professionalization of librarians. And um, he will present two different things. So he will talk about the digital citizenship program, but also about the AI cookbook. Um, and this is a tool for librarians that they can use if they want to develop programming concerning AI. So we think that this is really valuable and useful for all of you. Um, Jeroen has been part of the, the PL2030 community for many years. And we are really happy that um, he found the time to be here with us. So Jeroen, if you want to share your screen, the floor is yours. Um, I think I have shared my screen, but I'm not sure if you can see it. Yes, it's working, it's perfect. We can see it. Good, okay. Um, yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Luca, for uh, introducing me. Um, I will tell you a little bit about uh, the Digital Citizenship Program we have um, uh, developed at uh, KB together with the Dutch Network of Public Libraries. Um, and besides uh, talking a little bit about the program, I will also introduce you to uh, um, what I believe is a very nice intervention to use in libraries uh, are basically two interventions, uh, um, uh, What the Future Wants and the AI Cookbook, and both are intertwined, um, at least is my uh, perspective. Um, but first of all, about uh, the Digital Citizenship uh, Programme. Um, we have developed this, uh, I think now, uh, uh, two years ago. And we, have now, we are now in the implementing phase. And what we want to achieve is that um, Dutch citizens uh, are uh, actively and skillfully and resiliently moving around in digitizing society. 
And um, we believe that libraries are playing a very important role to uh, achieve this. So we received funding from the PICA Foundation to set up this program. And one of the tools for us to uh, position libraries uh, in this field is to uh, give them funding uh, to come up with nice programs to achieve uh, the goals that we have set. Um, and we have uh, uh, said that we want to um, uh, uh, see developments in three fields. Uh, digital skills, digital resilience, and yeah, what we call participation in democratic society. Um, uh, so these are the three pillars of our uh, program. And everything that we want to do, everything that libraries are doing with their uh, patrons um, has to have impact. So we are doing, we are conducting a lot of research uh, on everything that is uh, going on in libraries, uh, or at least things that are funded by our uh, program. Um, and for now, we have um, said that we want to move in five uh, topics of interest. So making and experimenting, that's the first. Uh, the second is disinformation and social media. Uh, the third is robotics and AI. Uh, the fourth is basically um, uh, a topic about ethics. Uh, so uh, a moral compass, so to say, when it comes to digital issues. Um, and last but not least, uh, citizen science. So these are the, the five topics that we also see that are most prominent in libraries already. So of course, we we want to uh, not to not to ask from them to be active in topics that aren't um, prominent uh, at the moment. But of course, we have a long list of topics that we want to address in the next couple of years because the program is running until two thousand and twenty seven. So um, we have some time to address other issues as well, which of course um, in this time and age is. Uh, um, uh, something that we uh, must be prepared for. Um, so the the, the, uh, the big unknowns uh, that we want to address um, in the next couple of years. Um, so that's very short about um, the program. If you want to know more, um, use this email. Um, but I think it's most um, uh, fun and engaging for you to learn about actual things that are possible in libraries. So first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about uh, what the future wants. Um, maybe you've known about it. Maybe if you know about uh, a little thing called the Data Detox Kit or about the, the classroom, uh, classroom uh, exhibition. Well, this is basically coming out of the same course. Um, that's uh, Tactical Tech, Tactical Technology, an NGO from Berlin. And they are develop developing a, a lot of nice programs uh, also for public libraries. Um, what the Future Wants uh, uh, is one of uh, these examples. And it's basically about uh, um, putting young people in the center, uh, which also means that young people, students uh, uh, have helped um, to make this project, what, you, what the future wants, which basically is an exhibition that you can set up in your library. Um, and what the programs want to achieve is basically answer questions as you see on your screen right now. Uh, so th these are questions that young people have. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, the exhibition is, is designed to address these uh, questions um, and then come up also with a lot of tools to have uh, a conversation or a dialogue um, about, about these um, issues. Um, the nice thing, and that's also one of the reasons that I want to uh, show this uh, exhibition here in this context, if that is available in a lot of questions, a lot of languages. Um, 
Uh, and basically, uh, you can download uh, the PDF in your preferred language, print the exhibition, uh, and set it up in your library. So it's also very cost effective um, and a lot of fun. And you see an example of how you can set up the exhibition uh, uh, right here. Uh, but this is just one way to do it. Um, you can see that the actual format of the posters in this way is, is small, but you can also make it really large or put it on, on other, uh, print it on other, other materials, depending on your local context. Uh, so that, that's also what I really like about this. Um, uh, you can have an exhibition set up like this, which will basically cost you, well, let's say a hundred euros uh, for printing costs. Um, and that's basically what it is. Um, but within this exhibition, there are a lot of questions, quizzes, um, uh, 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 topics that you want to address in a very engaging way. Um, uh, so you ask from, from, the, from the participants to give, to give their input as well, which is very, very interesting. Um, uh, so the, 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 the threshold to engage is, is really low. And that's what I really like about it. Um, the, the, um, the topics of what the future wants are, well, uh, um, typical topical tech topics. Um, uh, if you don't know them, they are really about digital data, digital privacy, and having a critical view at those. Um, so the four topics addressed in what the future wants are first of all, the way that mobile technology or technology in general is trying to get your interest. Um, and that is basically a strategy that big tech companies have. So how can you become resilient? Uh, also in understanding why this works this way and how you can well, design your own strategy to get away some time from all the uh, digital um, uh, uh, well ways uh, um, uh, to attract your attention. Um, the second one is about uh, data. For instance, the data that you give away when you uh, make a selfie uh, uh, and share it online, which is obviously only one way to share data, uh, willingly or unwillingly. Um, the third topic, and that's what I really like, is about sustainability. So what, what um, uh, effect does, for instance, AI have on uh, uh, the natural world and our natural resources? Um, uh, and the fourth topic is about big tech in general. So how does big tech work? What are their strategies? Uh, of course, this is connected, especially also to the third two topics, um, uh, but getting a way to understand how big tech works is, is obviously uh, uh, very important. And again, these topics are also very prominently addressed by the young people that were um, part of uh, um, uh, developing this, this exhibition. So for instance, sustainability was uh, um, a topic that, that young people named as one of the, the most uh, important things when it comes to dig uh, digitizing society. Um, so uh, like, I, like I just said, uh, within the exhibition, um, there are a lot of ways to engage with the public. Um, so for instance, what you see right now is, is basically uh, a card that you can give to participants um, and ask them to score uh, how much they, uh, they use their mobile phone. Uh, and of course, this is a very nice thing to do for yourself, but especially when you come with a group of uh, uh, people, uh, you then of course uh, tell each other what, you, what your score is. Um, and this immediately leads to uh, an active dialogue uh, where there's no right or wrong. Um, but the nice thing about this is that you have this very engaging way to think about, in this case, the way you use technology, uh, how often you use technology, um, 
and how this relates to, for instance, uh, a friend or a colleague or uh, a classmate. Um, this is another way to engage. Um, how do you define a good company or a bad company? Um, uh, and what are what are parameters that you use to define what is what is right, what is wrong? Um, and of course, you can also very nice apply this, for instance, to to a topic. So you can say uh, we are not talking about a company, but about AI, for instance. What do I like about AI? What do I don't like about AI? Write it down. Take some time to, well, let it sink in. Um, uh, uh, and get a good thought about it, and then again engage in dialogue um, uh, uh, to see how you and the people around you are uh, uh, looking at at this um, uh, topic. And what I really like about the exhibition is that there are actual quotes of young people um, who were part of setting up this exhibition. Um, uh, this is only uh, a little amount of quotes. There's a, uh, there's a lot more, uh, but especially when you, for instance, set up this uh, exhibition in your library uh, and invite uh, young people um, uh, and and uh, get them uh, in contact with these uh, with these quotes, you can then, of course, again have this dialogue. Uh, about uh, do you recognize this? Uh, what do you feel about, um, for instance, uh, uh, people from Ireland saying uh, we want a say in our platforms? What does this? Uh, what 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 does this mean? What is a platform? What does uh, a say mean? So um, uh, all kinds of ways, uh, especially for a librarian or a teacher, to get this role of facilitating this uh, um, discussion. Um, but what we what we saw uh, that are that, that there are a number of ways to engage that are part of um, uh, the exhibition. But especially when it comes to AI, um, we see that a lot of librarians are a bit hesitant to address this. So what we see in the Netherlands, for instance, is that um, when we want to host a session about AI in the library, we basically invite something from the outside to come in and uh, give a talk or a workshop. But the, the, the librarian in place is um, not really part of this discussion. Um, and of course, we want to change this. Um, because we feel that uh, librarians should be, um, well, they are engaged, but they, 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 they shouldn't feel that they don't understand what's going on. Um, and the reason why we think that this hesitant standpoint is there is that um, uh, uh, the topic often goes about technology and the way technology works and you know the real hard things to explain, where basically we want to have a discussion. We want to have a civic dialogue. Um, so that's the reason why uh, me and uh, a couple of colleagues came up with the AI cookbook, which is basically a number of ways to engage in dialogue. So we are not having a technical discussion about what is AI, how does it work, uh, uh, things like that how important they may be. Um, but it's basically a number of dishes that we uh, uh, want to serve, um, which we have described. And for now it's only in Dutch, but it's all Creative Commons. So you are free to, 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 to translate this to your own language. Um, we have come up with a number of um, uh, uh, ways to 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 engage in this dialogue. So I have now uh, I am now showing you one of the one of the main dishes, um, and this main dish is about uh, filter bubbles. So how how can you have a, a conversation about filter bubbles where you can also address that filter bubbles and AI are intertwined? 
So there's a little bit of, of uh, explanation for the facilitator uh, to understand why there's a connection. Um, and then we have a, 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 a way in which we want to have the participants uh, get their phone, uh, open one of their social media uh, feed or, or a YouTube feed um, and just compare with each other um, if there are uh, uh, the same things that you see in your feed or, or really, really interesting differences. Um, and then again, have a conversation about, okay, but why, why does it work this way? Um, how do I feel about uh, um, uh, the way it works? Um, do I maybe feel that I have a say in, in the way platforms are uh, designed? Um, so again, uh, um, uh, I think this really connects to, 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 to the What the Future Wants exhibition, um, where the cookbook is really focused um, and meant for use by um, the facilitators. So the cookbook isn't for, for, for visitors in the library. It's, ma it's mainly, um, well, a, a menu for librarians um, to have a number of ways to engage with the public, um, uh, in, this, in this case, uh, about AI. Um, uh, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, will, I will just show you a couple of examples. This is a, this is a starter, um, which is uh, about um, uh, uh, um, how do you say this? Um, coming up with a recipe. So uh, a recipe, in our opinion, is the way um, how AI works. You know, it's basically describing. Um, how you come um, from A to B. Um, so in this sense, uh, in this way, we are um, uh, asking from the people going, coming into the library to be in a workshop, to come up with their own recipes in which, in which they describe uh, something, something very common that they do from day to day. So um, can you describe um, in a, in, a, in a formula, basically, um, what happens when you uh, wake up and go to school and describe it um, uh, very, very, very detailed, um, which of course has the goal to, to get this feeling about, okay, this is how code works. Um, uh, and code is of course the basis um, uh, uh, of AI to work. Uh, so getting this basic understanding and at the same way, not asking from a librarian to teach coding, um, but to use this concept of coming up with a recipe um, uh, to have this topic um, addressed, but in a, in a, in a low threshold way. Um, and the last uh, example I want you to see is the topic, a topic about AI and health. Um, which basically asks from the participants, can you describe how you were thinking about your personal health 10 years ago? Um, and did you use technology back then or not? Um, can you describe it in the here and now? So how are you thinking about your health and are you using technology to answer questions or to get a grip or to use uh, a smartwatch to track your uh, uh, waste, so to say. And can you describe AI and health in uh, 10 years in the future? And can you imagine what roles technology plays um, when, it, when, it, when it comes to uh, addressing questions or addressing issues? And of course, again, also, um, having this dialogue in a group um, to compare and to have a discussion uh, about what's going on. So let's look at uh, what I wanted to wanted to uh, um, to show you to tell you. Of course, I will share my presentation and also the URL where you can find all the documentation. Um, and I can imagine that in the end of this webinar there will be questions as well or uh, remarks. So um, I will stop sharing my presentation. Okay.
Um, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Jeroen. This is so interesting and it's actually really linking to a presentation we had during the last webinar because it was also um, an initiative that came out of the um, tactical tech initiative for guerrilla training for librarians on data privacy. So and it was Maya from Croatia from Prelog who presented it and she described also this approach that you create a manual and tools that you can use, you can develop to your own needs and you can pass them on to your colleagues. And this is, is a similar approach. And this is also why we want to share it here because we have so many librarians joining and they want to know what they can do. And this is quite useful. Um, yeah. I was wondering, I had one question, um, how these um, formats are being picked up in the Netherlands. So do you have some numbers um, also about the exhibition? I, I don't have actual numbers, uh, but I know that there are a lot of libraries who are, for instance, working with the Data Detox Kit. Mm -hmm. um, um, I see a couple of nodding head so um uh, uh but for people who don't know what it is the data detox kit is basically um a way to uh get a grip on your on your personal data and um getting a getting a um a more critical viewpoint uh, about it and the kit is available uh as a as a special youth version as well uh, but also for for uh, for uh, adults, um, and the the kit is basically the, the data research kit is basically the foundation for all other things that technical tech is doing when it comes to um, uh, uh, their their public facing uh, interventions. So what the future wants, the topics that are addressed there are also addressed in the data detox kit, but then more focused on the data part. Mm -hmm. um, I can imagine that it's also part of, of the Karelia kit that you just described, uh, uh, Luca. Mm -hmm. um, um, so it's it's um, uh, just just have a look at tacticaltech.org if you, if you don't know uh, this organization, but they do a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 all free material. So um, uh, basically, the, the way um, that the What the Future Wants exhibition um, set up also goes for another exhibition that they uh, have, the classroom exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, but also, the detox kit is just a PDF that you print uh, and you can freely adapt and use. Uh, because, like I said, it's all Creative Commons uh, content. Um, uh, so if you want to translate it to to uh, another language, it's also then again uh, shared on the technical tech uh, website. So you're then building also on uh, a, a common resource. So I, I really like the things that they are doing. Uh, mm -hmm. and they are constantly developing and, and really have a big heart for libraries. That's great. So, um, just just get in touch with them uh, because they are very eager to um, uh, to work with libraries to get uh, projects going. Thank you, Jeroen. This is a really useful resource and we will promote it in the Adele network, but not only there, also with the Lighthouse libraries. So this brings me to our next presentation. So I will just for a second go back to the screen, but then Thomas, you can also go on um, and share, share your screen in a second. So we have um, a special project Thanks. being presented today by um, Thomas, who is based in Vale Public Library in Denmark, but he's actually representing the Danish Central Libraries. And um, Vale is one of our newest PL 2030 Lighthouse Libraries. So we are quite happy that he's here and sharing project they are doing with you um, and Thomas is really curious and adventurous uh, when it comes to virtual spaces and virtual the virtual library but he also worked um, on data democracy topics and on other other mm. issues related to this field so um, we will hear about um, 
a really inspiring initiative, a virtual library ship. So Thomas, the floor is yours. Thanks. Yeah, that's good. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Hi, everybody. It's, a, it's an honor as well speaking. It's great to be part of, of this network. Um, and thanks to your own de Boer. I was really inspired hearing about that, that you can have for a foodie like me, that can, one who likes new tech, that you can actually combine them <laughs> and you can have the cookbook. Um, and I think it's interesting when you're talking about new technology because we're humans, right? And we have senses. We can taste, the robots can't taste food. They can't digest food. And they can't touch each other. And, and, it, and maybe they aren't that good at answering uh, or sorry, asking questions, even though they can answer a lot of questions, it seems. Um, they don't know the good taste of a pint of Guinness. I know there's a lot from Dublin, <laughs> which I also appreciate. And we're having a fermentation workshop after this. So new tech in food is something that, that's filling up my day. And then it's great with, with um, getting to speak to you and also answering questions afterwards and, and connecting. But I would love to share uh, with you about the virtual library ship because being humans and having senses and wanting to connect to other people, um, what if you know librarians did an AI cookbook? They do, which is great. What if people working at libraries um, who were focused on, on human needs, seeking knowledge, sharing knowledge, building communities, what if it was us who did who created uh, virtual spaces and a metaverse and not, uh, I won't say uh, much bad about uh, him, but let's see if I can just show you. Um, we have a company like Meta who wants to build the metaverse with Mark Zuckerberg, obviously as their CEO. And a lot of uh, impressive technology, uh, a lot of interesting opportunities and um, it seems as if it's coming. It's, it's being developed. A lot of commercial interest, a lot of money is going into a spatial web, um, VR, AR, and building some kind of metaverse. And obviously, there's a lot of interest in, in kind of owning a metaverse. Um, we wanted to explore if it was possible for libraries to create a virtual space. And we, we explored and created this uh, together with great collaborators, this virtual library ship, because we wanted to explore and create a space that draws on the DNA of, of a public library, um, being accessible to all. It's all about people connecting, seeking knowledge, being curious, um, meeting, um, Obviously, the ship would be the analog for, for traveling, uh, exploring the world, different worlds, uh, going to Dublin, going to Den Haag, going to Brussels or Nigeria or whatnot. Um, so that was kind of what we wanted to do, to do. And the purpose was exploring the technology, obviously, the spatial web, VR, virtual spaces, and also to um, explore or, or kind of try to answer the what if question is like, what if we could connect in a virtual space that was non-commercial, that has to do with um, exchanging stories and knowledge about connecting people and about giving people the, the agency or, or the power to share their stories and their content, co-creating content. Um, as you can see. And actually, just to give you a kind of an overview, I would love to show you a video because it actually does it better than me, I think. And then I'll go back to, we will jump into the ship and I can show you the ship from within. And uh, it's actually possible today, I can share the link to go to the webpage. And if you have VR glasses, you can explore the ship in VR. It's fully functional now, thanks to our collaborators. But I would love to show you a video and I'll just do a quick test. Maybe Luca, you can tell me if the sound works. 
does it work? Did you did you hear some? some I good muted. Sounds? But, um, I didn't hear anything. Did you hear? Just a anything? moment. Yeah. You have earphones, right? Maybe. Yeah, I do. Maybe you have to to use the micro. Sometimes it's it's linked to that. No, now we don't. Let's try again. No, we don't really hear you. Den er med overalt. Gem bag de uskyldige øjne. I smilet, der forblænder jer. Jeg taler gammel, og jeg vil gerne anmelde den nye bog af Regret and Dead Are Deep. The zoo was built in 1958. It was a huge success. Even though it was a bit difficult to get the animals up the steep terrain. Vi kommer fra Rejle, og vi har spilleri herinde. Det gamle bomuldspilleri fra 1996. Hvor indenfor, og herover kan man se det gamle spilleri. Her er caféen, og et eller andet jeg kan udtale. Om bagved os, der har vi kulturtaget.
Um, we can he we can't hear you. So I think you have to plug in your earphones again. Good. Let's try. Can you hear me now? It's you working. Good. Good. Well, that's the thing with tech. That's lovely. You, you can usually get it to work. Sometimes you can't, but okay. But that was a, a movie about the library ship and our attempt to explore virtual spaces. And we did a great collaboration with Dutch artist Bink and also uh, a programmer and a company in uh, uh, in, in Germany uh, doing a 3D model and a ship where it actually works as a homepage. Um, just to show you shortly here, when you jump into the ship, you can obviously uh, visit the ship. I'll just refresh this one. You can load it as a web page. Being a, a 3D model, it's built in Unity, if you know that, but it's what a lot of companies use um, for building 3D models of houses as well as, as virtual spaces. Um, and we wanted to co-create content with, with, with citizens and test groups. So if you move around um, on the ship, you might get stuck in the walls, you can see that, but usually you can jump, you can move around, you can visit different rooms. And I just wanted to show you one room, downstairs actually, this is the ship, this is the connectivity globe, we call it. Imagine if you could, I'll just jump down here. If you could have a lot of, of virtual spaces, a lot of libraries, you could jump from one to the other using the pins on the globe. And if you jump in here, we actually have, we collaborated with a group of young writers and they they shared some of them for the first time, some of the, the novels, short stories that they've written. They haven't, hadn't shared them with anyone with the world before and they were quite vulnerable about them. Some of them are, are really personal. But, but but great and moving. And they actually shared them, recorded them as small audio clips. And if you press one of them, they'll actually start speaking and they'll tell their own story. Um, their teacher can answer different questions about getting a writer's block, something like that. Or if you want to create a new character for your book, you can get tips. And they had their own hand drawn avatar so you can actually see them here in a, in a in a virtual version and you can press them to hear them read their stories aloud a door. yeah and there's a pawn on witching you hour can, you can beyond the bedtime you can start and end it but that's what i wanted to, sh to share in some yada the banker yeah so i'll just i have a bit of sound in my other ear but that was the attempt to explore the virtual space and also co-create with test users, both kids and youngsters and um, adults as us. Um, how could you create this non-commercial uh, uh, virtual space? And yeah, in a meaningful way. Thanks for the time. I'll Thank stop you, now. <laughs> Thomas. That's so inspiring, this whole idea of the travel traveling virtual library ship what i was wondering before we, we look um if there are other questions is what how do you integrate this ship into your work with uh, with different groups with schools with the communities mm. so because maybe you can tell us a bit about this yeah i'm happy to and actually i would love to invite any of you if you want to collaborate because we did a, this as a pilot project and we engage with different user groups and citizens locally and in other uh, cities to create content. And we created it with them, we displayed it, we added it to the ship and we gave them a tour or we sent them the link or we did a presentation and we got their feedback and we developed. Um, we have created, we did on the next library festival, we did a hybrid exhibition where we tried to create a physical exhibition um, that was that kind of led as a portal into the virtual library ship. 
So we actually created an exhibition that in the style, creative look of Bink, the artist, looked like the ship with the wooden boards and everything and the sail. There were seagulls uh, saying something, artifacts. And we wanted to do that at libraries as well, create a hybrid exhibition where you can enter in the physical space and then you can add, you can put on your VR glasses or you can use your computer. Um, and we would want to actually do more tests and see how we can integrate it. We haven't done it fully yet, but we've tried something out and we want to continue. And maybe if some of you are interested, interested that would be fun. Yeah. And do you have uh, specific topics you want to address, or maybe you could even think about a like a call or something, you know, and then mm -hmm. to invite, I think this would make it maybe more easier for people to to say, yes, we can, we have actually an idea, but we can talk good about point. it after That's the webinar. Point. Yeah. So um, this could yeah. make sense. We can have a look. Are there any any questions? or ideas or comments? Is there anything from the group coming? I don't see any at first sight. It's, um, what I would propose then is that we, those who are there, that we turn on our cameras, can we can see each other and we take some screen, a last screenshot from everybody. And you know that we will share um, the contacts, the presentations, um, the recordings with you. And this was the last webinar, but um, I'm sure we well we really managed to create um, a community around this project. So we want to to keep it alive, maybe um, with with them um, integrating. Uh, initiatives we encountered during the webinars. We could think about the library ship. We can imagine many things. So we want to go on and it's not yet over, but it was the last webinar. So I would like to invite you to, to wave and to smile and we take a picture of you. I don't know if we see each other again in this constellation. Juliet, are you taking yes, that? Yes, I am. That's great. Yeah, people from Dublin, you can see them. And... Where are they? Oh, yeah, they are a bit blurred, but um, that's lovely. So great to see everyone. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, well, then, Thomas, Jeroen, thank you very much. Um, you know, we'll be definitely in touch. And there is under the Belgian presidency next year. Um, there will be a conference in Ghent on media and digital literacy. And we are just thinking about um, proposing contents related to libraries. So let's connect. Um, it yes, would be absolutely. really interesting. I was just, yeah, there are so many possibilities. And if we have a good pitch, we can present something there and make a point and show what is happening in libraries. So I think it would be great. But I get back to you on that. Good. Okay, well, then it's amazingly four o'clock. So we are perfectly on time. <laughs> and um, I say bye bye. And I wish everybody a lovely afternoon. And with the fermenting workshop, great. <laughs> so um, yeah, have fun it's with it. Be tasty, maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Mm. Goodbye, everybody. Thanks Thank you so for much. Now. Bye bye. Take bye -bye. care. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank you.